What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghosts in the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. Today we have a very special episode. It's a topic I've wanted to cover for the past couple months, and today I'm finally going to do that, and that is the Acoustic Records. I have a special guest to come in and enlighten us about it and tell us everything there is to know about the Acoustic Records. Is there a place out in the universe that has all the answers? That's what we're going to cover on this episode of Ghost of the Night. Let's get started. Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. On the phone, we have Susan E. Rogers. Now, if you've listened to this podcast, you have probably heard her episode where she and I discussed her book, Uncovering Norman. And in that episode, she brought up a topic that, honestly, I was ignorant about. And I had heard once or twice, but never really done any research. And that was the Akashic Records. So after that interview, we discussed her coming back on and kind of enlightening me and educating me on the topic. And that is who we have on the phone. Susan, thank you so much for joining me once again on Ghost in the Night. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm glad to be here. Now, the Acoustic Records, it's kind of funny. We talked, like I just said, we talked about you coming back on because I wanted to learn more about it. And I got busy and I didn't forget about it, but I was kind of putting it off a little bit because I had so much stuff to do. And then I was actually, the only knowledge I have about the records are from what I was watching TV one day just doing something around the house and it was on History Channel and Ancient Aliens came on. And they mentioned the acoustic uh-huh. record. They mentioned the acoustic record, so my ears perked up. I said, I need to get her back on. So I, I sat there and, <laughs> and listened there, to and it. here I am. So that is kind of, that's honestly, if I'm being totally honest, that is pretty much all I know about the acoustic records. I kind of started to kind of YouTube to kind of research. I didn't sound so stupid when I talked to you on this, but YouTube is full of a bunch of stuff that I'm, I didn't really, I don't know the validity of it, all of it. So I just wanted to. I just said, screw it. I'm just going to kind of let you educate me. And if I sound ignorant, oh. that's fine. So okay. tell me exactly, in your opinion or your expertise, what the Akashic Records are. Um, the Akashic Records. I just, I'm sorry. I just got a big booming in my ear. I'm not sure what it was. Huh. Um, the Akashic Records are pure energy. It is the Akasha, which contains the records, is kind of that ethereal place up in the universe where you think about it and you think you know it, but nobody really knows it. Um, it's The word Akasha comes from Sanskrit, which is that ancient uh, Indo-European language, which includes um, all of the Hindu scriptures were written in Sanskrit, and a lot of the modern Indian languages were derived from that. But it's a very ancient language. And in Sanskrit, the word akasha means primary substance. So they've used that word akasha, meaning primary substance, to talk about this ethereal place where all things are formed. Um, kind of the place of creation. Okay. And throughout history, we all know that almost every culture, every religion, every society has had some kind of uh, folklore that has been an attempt to try to explain the mystery of creation. Mm-hmm. Everyone. I mean, right. just I, I can't think of one that hasn't. Right. Um, so the Akasha, in some cases, could be considered heaven. It could be considered... Um, the universe, whatever your own personal belief, cultural and religious might be, Yakasha is that place where creation occurs. Right. Um, now, coming from the Akasha are the Akashic records. Okay. And the Akashic records, um, the discovery, the first discovery of the Akashic records is credited to Madame Blavatsky. Does that name ring any bells with you? I I, I think I, it's ring. I have heard of it, but I'm trying to place. Yeah, it's I've kind heard. of vague. People people kind of say, "Oh, I think I've heard of her," but yeah. I'm not really sure what she did. Um, Madame Helena Blavatsky was a Russian occultist and spirit medium. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. She was also an author. Right. She um, co-founded um, an association called the Theosophical Society in 1875. And it was a very, this was a spiritualist right. type of society. Um, and she herself, Madame Blavatsky, claimed to have traveled all over the world, but particularly one of her travels was supposedly to Tibet. And this is where she learned the, the secrets of the Akasha, okay. or where she credits that. And so, according to her, um, the Akasha and its records, the Akashic records, could be accessed and manipulated through psychic and spiritual means. Okay. And she reported that she could do that, having learned all this from ancient Tibetan knowledge. Um, a lot of people discredit her, but she is the one who first used the concept and the term Akashic okay. Records. Right. Um, so in order to discuss the Akasha and the Akashic Records, we have to um, have some knowledge of some presumptions. There are presumptions here. Okay. And the first and foremost is reincarnation. Right. In whatever form you choose to believe that occurs. Um, most cultures throughout history have believed in some form of reincarnation, living again. Um, the presumption here is that uh, reincarnation occurs over and over until you learn the lessons you're supposed to learn. Your soul learns those lessons. Right. And when people talk about karma, um, this is where that comes from. Right. That if you have a lesson to be learned in your life mm-hmm. and you don't learn, harm is going to come back and make you try it all over again because you didn't get it right. Right. Okay? Yeah. Um, so, the, and according to the concept of the Akasha and Akashic Records, the decisions for your next life are made by your soul in that interspace between the life that just ended and the next one to come. Right. And that's where they decide what lessons you need to learn, okay. what what you need to learn to move on. And eventually, the presumption is that your soul will learn everything that it needs to learn and wants to learn. And when you've reached that highest plane, perfection, you no longer need to be reincarnated. You can move on into the Akasha. Okay into the universe and perfection. Right. Okay, okay am, I, am, am I making sense so that, far? Is it, it, make, is that, it any clearer? That makes a lot of sense because I've done an episode in the past, I believe, I don't think with Melissa Cummings, where we talked about astral projections and some other stuff. We've, I've had her on twice as well. And she spoke a lot about the reincarnation because, and kind of, and that pretty much mirrors what she was saying with the, every time you're you're learning something, and each time you come back, you're trying to learn more and you get to a certain point to where you've learned everything you there is for you to learn. You've reached that perfection and then you move on to whatever there is out there, which Nirvana, Nirvana, right, whatever is out right, there, yeah. which is basically whatever your own yeah, belief yeah, is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm with you so far. Okay, good. So if we take the Akashic Records, um, the concept is that the Akashic Records are pure energy, universal, meaning of the universe, energy. They contain the record of every single soul that has ever existed and its journey through all the past, present, and future possibilities. So the Akashic Records are the energy source for each and every life. So Energy plays into this a whole lot. But... If yeah. I'm, just so I'm saying clear, it what you're saying is it has the records of every soul. Now, everybody has a soul, and that soul has been here from the beginning, essentially, and just lived lives, learning lessons. Now, did I hear yeah. you Did I hear you right to where it has your past records, your present records, and your future records? Uh, yes, yeah, that get? is true. So, just yeah. using me, for instance, I'm on this plane right now, but the, my it's... Basically, I'm re- relating it to like predestination, essentially, kind of vaguely. Yes. So that was the next thing I was going to okay. talk about. Yeah. All right, then go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because so that that is the frequent question. 
That is the question that always comes up whenever I speak with anyone. And it's a tough thing to, to figure out. Right. So if we humans uh, are supposed to have free will, exactly. Um, how can the Akashic Records have already been written for anything we'll do in the future? Right. It's a biggie. It's a I big mean, question. yeah, it's kind of always been, when I was young, you know, my parents were religious, my grandparents were uber religious, you know, and I was the, I was brought up where, you know, you didn't miss church. I was brought up essentially Baptist. But you know you didn't yep. miss you didn't miss church on Sunday, no matter what I think in my first fourteen years of my life, fifteen years of my life, I never missed Sunday. I'd take it back. I missed once, I think, and it was a Super Bowl <laughs> yeah. Sunday. My my favorite team was I think the uh -huh. Raiders were playing, and my mom let me stay home and watch this. But I oh, said, wow. but, but I had to make it up, and because I always tried to get out of Wednesday, I was you know yeah. that was my that was my routine. I'd be begging and plead Wednesday, but I couldn't even mention not going Wednesday. I had to. Get ready and go. Right. So that you know, my first yes. fifteen years, that that was my life. <clears throat> and but that was always my kind sure. of. Oh, I get it. That was always kind of my yeah. as a young child thinking, listening to all these lessons. I was like, okay, predestination, but free will is completely contrary to that. To that yes. concept, it seems that it is right. But it as seems that it is. As I've gotten older and I've even delved more into the paranormal and supernatural stuff, I kind of started thinking, you know. If I'm going to California, taking a road trip to California, I'm predestined yep. to get to California. But the, where, uh, how I relate it is the free will is how I get there, what roads I take. Okay, they all, that's, that's a good example. That's kind of sure. they, they all go to the same place. It's just the journey between the two points is kind of where the free will comes in. I can make a right turn here, okay. and get, that's kind of how I kind of okay. That's that's about a it. very adequate explanation, okay. I think. And, but I'm going to add one more layer to that. Okay. Okay? When we talk about free will versus predestination, we have to remember or keep in mind that the Akashic Records are energy, mm -hmm. and therefore they are dynamic. Okay. Energy is always in motion. So the records are dynamic. They are energy. They are not static. So when we talk about predestination, if we're thinking of, I don't know, who is it, Martin Luther? that everything you do is already predetermined and blah, blah, blah. Right. You, you know, have no choice. Right. We do have choice. Because what happens is your soul chooses these lessons that they, that they feel it needs you, your soul, needs to learn. So the lesson is presented. And as you say, the end point would be learning the lesson. What, what is pre, that could be predestined because your soul has decided that. The free will is, what choices are you going to make as a human being to get you to that destination, to learn that lesson? The additional layer is sometimes you make the wrong choices and you never reach your destination. Right. So instead of going to California, you stop off in Vegas and you decide never to leave. Right, which okay. pro probably <laughs> has happened on more than one occasion to one person, <laughs> one or more people throughout the course of right. history. Right. So there, there is a goal. Right. There is a predestined goal. You've decided you want to learn this lesson your soul has. You make the choices about how to get there, but sometimes your choice never allows you to get there. Okay. I, That's full full free will explanation. Right. And let me let me ask you a quick I know we might be getting off a little bit of talk, but it's in my mind. Okay, now. no, that's okay. I, I want to kinda of, we've talked about, you know, souls, you know, reincarnating time and time again to learn these lessons. Now, dealing with the uh -huh. paranormal, naturally, I do a lot of paranormal investigating where I'm dealing with what may be spirits interacting with me. What do you think, yes. in, your, in your opinion, is is there kind of like, for just to kind of dumb it down on, to, for my level, like a waiting room? Like, you know, people have said per purgatory and what we are picking up through whether EVPs or some sort of encounter, paranormal encounter, is that kind of like a, is there like a, a waiting room to mm. between lives, essentially, or between times in this realm. Because if I, I, if you think about reincarnation, you die, something has to happen before you come back, uh, and is yes. or is it just instantaneously? I, you know, that's kind of no. Things have to happen, right? Yes, things have to happen. Okay. Yeah. I mean, do you, so I'll put this in terms of my own experience. Right. I've I've. As a, a psychic and a medium, I've dealt with a lot of ghosts and spirits right. over my lifetime as well. And what I feel is, 
um, and this is also based on my experience with Norman, which I wrote about in my book. Right. Um, sometimes part of the life, the past life, the present life, the future life, is being a spirit. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes, this is what Norman taught me, and I never probably would have come up with this on my own, but Norman, as a spirit, actually told me that his in his interspace between lives, his soul said, I've decided you're going to come back as a ghost, as a spirit, and learn this lesson. That the best way for you to learn it okay. is to come back okay, in really, that form. I never really kind of thought that, you know, thought about it in that term. Right. So that kind of does make sense. You're even in the times between the your lives, you're learning something. You're still learning. You're always trying Absolutely. to gain. Absolutely. Okay. Right. And I think where we get hung up as living, breathing human beings right. is that we think that the only life form is that the one we have. Right. That is not true. Because there are very many energy entities that are beings and they're not human. Because, you know, I feel, you know, we are energy. Our souls are essentially energy or and yes. energy doesn't dissipate. Energy is always there. Exactly. So when we, when this, exactly. when this vessel as in our body has reached its capacity to live on this earth, our energy just doesn't die. Just the body dies. And where does that energy go? Right. And, and that energy, which is your soul, moves on to that interspace between lives to kind of take stock of what you did. Did I learn what I'm supposed to learn? Do I got to go back? Do I need to learn something new? And that's what happens in the space between lives. Right. Your energy, your soul, okay. your essence, in other words. And with the Akashic Records, it kind of makes sense. I've always been fascinated when it comes to religions. There are so many different religions and interpretations of yeah. religion. But yeah. there is a com commonality between all of them. And so Absolutely. that is maybe that's the Akashic Records is everything. And these are all pulling from the Akashic Records. And it's just how our brains are interpreting. That's why we get so many different variations of the same story, essentially. Absolutely. Okay. That's totally my belief. Okay. Um, you know, I grew up as, was raised as Irish Catholic. And so, um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. But, um, yeah, it, it, Irish Catholic has the same tenets, the same basic beliefs, they, whatever form they take, mm -hmm. as Baptist, as Buddhist, somewhere. There's a creator, and there's a universe, and there's a soul. I mean, I think all, all you know, some life force, some, the soul. Right. Um, it's pretty common to just about every religion and culture that I've ever read about right. yeah. or learned about. Yeah, there's so much similarity in the world between, especially in the ancient past, you know, how could pe yep. people kind of have the same origin story, essentially, or similar origin stories between, you know, the in, in the Middle East, and then you look at Native American records of their origin stories. They're different, yeah. but there is, there, there's a common theme, essentially. The, in all, the, in all, essential, the essential truth in right. all of them is right. pretty much the same. And that really, because yeah, you know, when people talk about, you know, the Kashuk records, it's, it is kind of mind blowing to a certain extent, and I wouldn't yeah. blame somebody if they said, "You know what? This is a bunch of crap." I wouldn't blame somebody sure. for that because it's a lot to take sure. in. But if but if you look at the, it is, it is very complex. If you look at the commonalities and origin stories and religions, and even just in general knowledge that are between continents in a time where there was no high speed internet, there wasn't right. There wasn't any even that we know of but that's a debate for another day, you know, sea travel or crossing the ocean right. travel. So there should have been no communications between continents that they should have such similar thoughts unless, or similar ideas or similar similar ways of doing things with, unless they were all pulling from the same source, which would be the Akashic yeah. Records. Okay. Yeah, or whatever they call them in those days. Right, at exactly. At that time in their culture, right. exactly. Right. But essentially... I mean, that's the name we're giving to them. Right. It's that Sanskrit name, but it's that primary substance. Right. That it's energy the that's... The creation. The universal knowledge, essentially, that energy that they're all pulling yeah. from. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And even even scientists will tell you that the universe, from the, the most expansive part you can think of, down to the tiniest little piece of an atom, every 
single piece of the universe runs on energy. Everything. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is nothing that exists without energy. Right. So it has to be the source. Right. And yeah, I don't know how you can argue with it. So, okay. So, um, so free will versus predestination. And I, I think we kind of, if you think about it and it kind of can wrap your head around it a little easier, um, the karma issue with the Akashic with records of the Akasha, you know, there's always the examples of, um, you know, in a past life, there may have been a, a ruler, a king, whatever, who was malicious and mean to his subject. So the lesson he has to learn is when he comes back in his next life, he probably comes back as the most menial servant, slave, whatever, and is treated miserably, you know, right up to this day where, you know, he used to be the boss, now the worst employee on at the bottom of the totem pole, and his boss is a bastard. <laughs> so. It, it, it's all karma. It all comes back. So until you learn your lesson, you have to keep repeating them. Um, one other interesting concept with Akashic Records is that of soul group. Okay. Um, we hear people talk a lot about, you know, the love of their life is their soul mate. Right. Um, it sounds kind of silly sometimes, very romantic, but it probably is um, fact more than fiction. And what soul groups are, in terms of the Akasha and this energy and past lives and reincarnation, is that the same souls, they're, they're travel together with a group. Some come in, some come out. Uh, so, you know, my, uh, my son in this life could very well have been my father in a previous life. Okay. Or he could have been my cousin. Or he could have been my mother. It doesn't, gender is, is, just irregardless, right. you know, it's, there's no regard for gender. It doesn't matter. It's the soul. The soul has no gender. Um, so the same souls kind of travel together. Others, they can like, kind of bump up against each other, one one group and another, and it's very fluid across the, the line. So say Norman was in my, Norman has been in my soul group for many, many past lives, but not every one. Hmm, okay. Um, so, um it's an interesting concept as well. So when people say my soulmate, yeah, my my probably be, could have been your husband, your your wife, your mate, your partner, whatever, in, in many previous lives. Right. Let so, me let me ask um, you a quick question on, on this topic. Sure. I, I had somebody else on the podcast before, and we were talking about past lives and stuff. This person, I'm trying to think who it was. I'm drawing a blank right now. It might have been Melissa again, but she was talking about that maybe souls split a little bit. Or split that one soul can be go into different people essentially, and that could be a okay. concept concept of the soulmate to where you have, or maybe it's just the grouping thing that you're talking about. That that there has to be a reason why you are closer to some people. You meet people that it, you just click with. Yeah. That and then yeah. meet other people that you just from first go from from jump you just say I yeah. don't like this person. So I'm exactly. I am fascinated yeah. by that topic whether you know. I just never have heard the grouping scenario before. I just remember that conversation I had where, where they kind of refer to it as souls kind of split and one soul can go into several fractures and multiplies and goes into, oh, I think that's what we were talking about because I made just plain devil's advocate mentioned, you know, population, how sure. as yeah. things, there has to be a limited number of souls because are not limited number of souls. My question was, are we rebuilding or birthing new souls to accommodate for if, you know, the growth of the population. There, there's more people on the planet now than yeah. there was 10 years ago. And you go back to 100,000 years ago. And if it's all just a repeating cycle, are they repeating, repeating, yeah. you know, yeah, I hear you. are they creating new souls to go into each time frame? My, like, say, just for instance, me, this might, could this just be my first go around? You know, I didn't, that, right. I was just yeah. trying to kind of, come to the conclusion of why how population grows and or and with the limited number of souls or they're reproducing or whatever and i think they brought up the fact that that's where they kind of said well there's a they may split to two to kind of um okay, solve that yeah. problem solve I, that problem essentially and that is kind of the soul mate or how you just feel close to somebody that you've just met or something yeah um i i think that topic could be a whole podcast in itself right but just to just to kind of briefly answer what I my thought is, and again, it's just my thought. People have different interpretations right. and different beliefs. 
But my thought is that my understanding and what I have personally experienced, and I'm sure you've heard of this as, as well before, is that there are different planes mm-hmm. of existence. Okay, yes. There are different planes of time. Right. Time is, think of time here. Well, most people think of time here in this life as very linear. Right. You, know, you go from birth to death, point A to point B, from second to second to second, and 60 of those make a minute, and 60 of those make right. an hour, etc. Time is not linear. Time, we, we, we can't even begin to grasp as human beings with our limited brain capacity in terms of this. Um, just how expansive time is right. within our universe. It, it, time is not linear. It's everywhere. Right. So if you, if you think about, and this is, um, again, a big topic of discussion, but people who talk about astral planning or time traveling, right. while they're in meditative states or whatever, are actually, in my belief, crossing from one plane of existence to another. Mm-hmm. And they are there are parallel ones, so that a soul can be in one plane while its counterpart in a past life, it's really going to confuse you, the same soul in one plane can be experiencing a past life at the same time on a parallel plane. All right, now I'm officially confused. My br- my, my eyes are rolling in the <laughs> back right. of my head now. <laughs> I'm I'm sure they are, but it. I don't truly believe that a soul split. I think it always retain, remains intact, but I think it can be traveling in at different times. Okay. Different uh, times and different uh, realms, okay. universes, planes, at the same time. That makes sense. So, for example. If somebody says, um, oh, let me see, uh, kind of like the deja vu thing. Okay. It's almost like um, you hear somebody say, oh, no, that, that, I, I know that place. I've been here before, but I've never been here before. Well, maybe your soul in a past life has been there, and that past life is going on in another plane at the same time that you're visiting. Okay. That makes sense. That, in this okay. in this realm. Yeah, that's kind of making more sense now. Okay. It, it's very, I mean, it's, it's a very hard concept, but right. it's very, I mean, the whole point about time not being linear. It's the only way our human brain can grasp it. Right. You know, time of all... But it is not. Yeah. Time is, I'm, I've kind of done a little bit of, through my investigations and research, I've kind of, time is a human thing. We aren't even sure that time actually... Yeah. We've created it, time. It doesn't. It's just right. It's for all. Just it, the only way we could understand it. Right. You know, time. Progression. And this goes back to religion. This was a conversation I had with my mother. You know, the earth created in seven days, but that's we're thinking of is in terms of our seven days, not, yeah, it's not. the universal seven days, no. which could be seven billion years. You know, we correct. Yeah. You know, we we or only, seven seconds. Right. Exactly. So time, there's people that think time really doesn't exist. It's just well, something, a concept we came up with to justify our existence and how we see the world and measure our lives, essentially. So that's always kind of fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, throughout history, the human experience has been to try to explain concepts and ideas that we really can't understand. Right. So, for example, when they used to talk about, you know, the earth was flat and you'd fall off the edge, don't well, they had e- no don't experience. Even bring up, don't even bring up flat earth, because there's still people that do. <laughs> I will get a well, bunch. Well, because in I'm, their own experience, that's what exists. Right. I mean, I will get a bunch of emails now. Thanks. People are going to be. Sorry. That's all right. No, but, you know, from our, you know, I, this is what I say whenever. I didn't I, say it wasn't true. I just said in their experience, that's all that exists. I'll go ahead and say it wasn't true. Give me the give me the email. But okay. From our All right. but from our perspective, yes, it does. It, I agree with him. It looks. It appears to be right, flat. It appears yes. to be flat. So anyway, we'll go continue. Okay, so now we we kind of have a good understanding of what the akasha is and what the akashic right. records are. So what do we use them for? What's the point? What do, you know? What what purpose do they have for us? 
Okay. And I th- again, it started with Madame Blavatsky, who, who began offering it as a concept, as a means to access these records, um, these descriptions of our lives and our past lives. So we can use it, we can use these issues that have been repeated in our past lives multiple times for healing in our present life. So, for example, if you take a person who is going through um, severe depression, um, maybe related to grief, let's put it right through to something very tangible that we can understand, and just cannot seem to get over that. Um, Why not? Well, if you go back into past lives, perhaps they had such a severe um, uh, loss that their grief just totally overwhelmed them. They became depressed, maybe suicidal, whatever, but they just never dealt with the grief appropriately. They never learned the lesson about how to deal with grief. So that grief, that lesson, keeps coming up every life, every life, every life. So in your present life, if you understand that grief and depression in a severe form are problem for you, that it makes you dysfunctional, we can take a person back to the Akashic Records with a, with a, a, um, an appropriate practitioner, let me say. It's, it's very dangerous, not that I'm trying to say I'm the only one that can do it, but, it, but like many different forms of paranormal and supernatural, if you go into it not knowing what you're doing, right. you can make a big mess, right. make a big mess. So with a competent practitioner can take you back into a past life and can take you back and back and back until you find that life that caused this problem. That very first earliest life where you experienced such severe grief and depression that you couldn't respond and couldn't deal with it. And then when you understand the source, and you understand the circumstances because going into a past life, we can actually help a person experience what went on right. to relive it, almost as a hypnotist would do, right. you know, hypnotizing someone. Um, so you can take them back and have them relive or at least understand and, and view and experience it again so they know what the problem is. And once they understand what their issue is, they can bring it forward to their current life and begin to heal it, correct the problem. So that's that's what, as a practitioner, doing Akashic Records readings and therapy sessions for people, and I I hesitate to use the word therapy, but um, using sessions, healing sessions for them, can help them work through some of these issues. Okay, let me ask you another question. What what goes into becoming... A practitioner. I mean, is there a course or what? There's like most of the um, these kind of spiritualist issues. There's no. I mean, you're not going to go to the University of Arkansas and get a degree in Akashic Records. Right. Okay, that's not going to happen. I personally took a year long course with um, a woman who um, I felt was very well versed, who had studied for many years who had also taken courses and done her own studies in Akashic Records and was, in my opinion, I researched her thoroughly, was competent to, to teach others the practice. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I have a um, certification that she gave me. It's not a certification from a university or college or, you know, um, the uh, fellows of the Association of Akashic Records or anything like that. But I have her certification that she taught me everything she could about how to how to practice and help others with the Akashic Record. Okay, I mean, makes makes sense, and obviously, you Mm -hmm. put some time into it. If it took a year, now, how do what is the process to actually when you do a session or you look to access the records? Is it a meditative? I mean, I've kind of heard meditative state. Yeah. It is meditative. It's it's very meditative, and um, you go through the whole relaxation process first. You know, getting people to, to relax and breathe, 
deep, deep breaths and so on. Um, bring them into a, uh, to create in their mind a safe space right. where they are not judged. They are not judging themselves and no one else is going to judge them. A safe space where they can move into and out of the records and their past lives okay. without fear of judgment. So you bring them to that state meditatively. And then for those people who can um, image and and see visions in their own mind. Mm-hmm. So if I, um, it's kind of like guided, um, guided imagery, you know, guided meditation. I can describe to you a scene and you can picture it in your own mind. Right. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If not everybody can do that, but many, most people can, okay. but not everybody. So if, if you are a person who is capable of being able to image in your mind the description and the picture that's being handed to you or given, read to you as you are meditating, okay. that is very helpful, but okay. it's not necessary. Okay. So if you, if you can vision, then when we bring you back to your past life, you will actually be able to image and vision the events that occurred in that life in your mind. Okay. I guess that's the extreme form of deja vu. That, that, yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we would help someone okay. to, to go back to the past life through a meditative um, session and guided imagery, guided meditation, and, and bringing them back to the past life. Okay. I also, let me just say one more thing. I also, because of my own ability, can image and vision what they are seeing at the same time as I'm, really? that's how I'm describing it to them. So that I can go back into their Akasha record only with their consent. I cannot access anyone's Akashic record without their consent. Okay, that, that was actually uh, going to be another question. Okay. If you know, okay, what would stop you yeah. from accessing my records? And I, I can't okay. unless you say, "Let's do it." Okay. Yeah, I can't. Right. Um, the only thing I could do, rather than going actually into your record, I could look at my own record and view how we relate to okay. this specific issue. Because uh, oh, that brings up kind of another kind of question I've had with, with my what I knew about the Akash, what I heard about the Akashic rec- records in the time that we talked, mm-hmm. which was more of an ancient alien where they covered it. They covered yeah, it, sure. They covered it for more of a just a knowledge base. There's an, all the knowledge in the universe is in this one spot or in the mm-hmm. energy. And that's where... Yeah some of these great scientists or great leaders, they were accessing this and given given this information, which like Nikola Tesla, yeah. he always said he received the information. He did not think of it. It was given to him. A lot of Correct. people said that was alien, yeah. but there are those that theorize. No, it's not alien. No, I, right. They, there's, they yeah. theorize that it was, he was just tapping into the Akashic records or that energy. Whether, de- yeah, whether he did it deliberately or not. Right. It now, was- what, kind of downloaded to him as part of his knowledge. So as I'm thinking about this, and with you say, with you explaining that you know it's the past, present, and future, what would stop somebody? Because we are all human, and we are all greedy in some yep. way, shape, or form, to access the future, future records or that future knowledge for their own benefit. I mean, it seems like if there's an infinite, all the knowledge in the universe is out there to be had. What is yep. stopping? one evil Bond villain from going and accessing and getting, you know, the doomsday weapon, you know, or using it to their advantage. Well, I, if they have not created the doomsday weapon, they do not have access to the records of the person who did. Okay. For so, one thing. So it's not really just the, in your opinion. Or, it's not an open library where right. you can go in and pull a book off the shelf that belongs or to I, anyone. No. I, I, I was kind of, I'm kind of visioning in my mind, you know, I'm I'm older. I remember when there was a thing called encyclopedias that your parents spent oh, yeah. a right. lot of money on. A to Z had all the information yeah. uh, of the time. That's kind of like what yeah. I was thinking, how I'm picturing in my in my mind yeah. the Akashic Records. It's, well, that's so a huge library, right. huge library right. in, in the, up in the sky. And that's kind of how we have people um, image it, think about it, when I'm bringing them through the guided meditation. Mm-hmm. Like they're walking into this library and, you know, they sit down at a desk and there's one of those little lamps with the green shade on it and you turn on the light and the, 
know, the, the uh, library tech comes over and you say, I would like my book from Cleopatra Records, and they go flitting off and come back and place your book in front of you on the desk. And um, what do what you say to the book, what do I need to know? And the pages just kind of flutter and flutter and flutter and open at a particular page, and that's what you need to know. Okay. Let's read this piece. Let's read this story. So it kind of... It's, it's a good imagery. So it yes. gives you what you need to know, not necessarily what you want to know, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably... And if it's not your own to know it, you can't have it unless you have consent. I mean, because like, you know, if I said, hey, I want to know what I'm going to do in the future or my final destination or my future self, what's going to go on. And this kind of gets back to free will. If I knew that, doesn't that, that kind of changes everything, knowing your destination. So, can, But that's free will. But could I you actually... You can make those choices that change it. I mean, and can you, you actually... think about... Can you actually yeah. know your future? I mean, that'd be like knowing your future, knowing... Is there a way for in a session to move forward and see where you're going to be 20, 30, 40 years from now? I, I believe it is possible because I do believe that the records are dynamic. Um, and, and as I said before, if you are presented with a lesson that you need to learn, mm -hmm. you make a choice about how you're going to get there. If you choose something that doesn't bring you to your destination, it will change the record. So they're dynamic. They're, they're constantly in flowing and right. fluid based on the choices that you make. It's a, so it's, it's not predestined it, in that way. It's not set in stone. It's ever no. evolving. You're, it's ever changing, ever evolving. Yeah, your yes. future your yes. future record is ever evolving and always changing with your choices and what you've learned at the in the present. Okay. Yeah. Now I have when I was um taking my classes and there were probably I think there were fifteen of us in the class that were taking um this practitioner course for the Akashic Records. Uh, we did practice sessions on each other, of course. And one of the women who did a session for me actually took me into a future life. And I did write that up a little bit in uh, as, as the the epilogue to Norman, my book with Norman, um, uh, the details of of what my future life was. I also foresaw my death in that particular life. Oh, that would suck. That's yeah, I, I have seen I have seen my death in past lives, certainly. Right. Um, but and it was interesting to see how this future life played out and, and what my death was going to be in that life. Not in my current life. Okay, in the future. But in a, in a life in the future. future. Not necessarily this go around, maybe the next or not one, this one. life. Right, cause Whatever, that's, yeah. yeah. That's something I don't think I want to know even if I could know. <laughs> Yeah, I I probably could go in and try. I don't really want to. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, know that. You know that. I'd much rather be surprised when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I I hear you. Because <laughs> knowing my luck, I I'd go in and look and say, "Oh shit, that's tomorrow." <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, that yeah. Just, I just but ruined then, my last twenty four hours. Except if you think about the energy as being fluid, if you saw your life was going to end tomorrow because. You got on a bus and the bus got into a crash. What would you do tomorrow? Not take a bus. Yeah, but then. So then your records are changed. Yeah, my luck. They say, well, you're just going to get hit by a different bus. But uh, that's just be. <laughs> well, that could be. <laughs> that could be. But the whole story, the ending of the story, would have changed. Right. Because of the choice you made. It's. I mean, it's fascinating to. It is fascinating. I mean, to, and it's so complex and it's ever evolving, and there's so much to learn about it. Right. I mean, there's things that that I know I have, have learned in my class that we haven't even touched on yet. Right. You know, because um, I've always been fascinated. I mean, that what really fascinates not so much the future stuff is the past stuff. You know, I never yeah. was a huge believer in reincarnation. You know, I it was uh -huh. just a theory out there, but I've uh -huh. always kind of wondered, okay, if there is something to it. Because you know, when, when I was in college, I majored in history. I've always been fascinated with the past. Um, the more I thought, yeah. well, it'd be actually kind of cool to see or know if reincarnation is an actual thing, what I was in the past. Or of course, what yeah. kind of lives did I, I live? Was I you know, a pharaoh at one time, or was I just a servant? Or were I, was I both, or just a middle management guy in 
back in the caveman days. Or, you know, I've always been yeah, fascinated. Yeah, right. You know, where, yeah. what that path was and what lessons I did learn, you know. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. Yep. It's absolutely fascinating. And the, and the possibilities are infinite. Right. They really are. Um, so, but we're both still here. And so obviously we haven't learned all our lessons yet. There's right. a lot more to come. Right. So what, anything else you want to cover with the Akashic Records that we haven't hit or anything important? Um, well, I think I, let me just mention one other thing. Okay. And that is about soul contracts, which okay. are an important part of the Akashic Records in past lives. Okay. So we talked about if you have an issue in this life, the grief, severe grief, you're not able to deal with it. You go want to go back into a past life and find it and and figure out what caused that in the first place. A soul contract is a contract, an agreement that your soul kind of makes with the universe mm-hmm. or with itself or with another soul. Um, and like any contract, you know, this is my part of the bargain. That's your part of the bargain. I have to do this. So if you make a contract that says, I will grieve you, you, my mother's dying. I will grieve you for the rest of my life. I will never let you go kind of thing. Um, you're stuck. You've made that contract. You've made that vow and you have to honor it. Life after life after life until you figure out how and when you have, you have paid in full. Hmm. Have I done enough? This is your soul contract. We all have them. Wow. We've got tons of them from past lives. Some of them are, you know, look, just they kind of go by the wayside. One of the things I can do as an Akashic practitioner is help you identify through this past life regression what soul contracts you may be holding on to. Do they need to be there? Are they serving you any purpose? Do you need to renew them? Do you need to revise them? You, You know, add things to it, take things away. Have you not learned that lesson yet? You need to keep it going. Or have you completed that debt? Have you have you paid it in full? And you can now get rid of that. And that's one of the things that Akashic Records sessions and healing can help with as well. That really, so, that yeah. makes sense. I mean, that, you know, everybody has, uses the term baggage. They bring baggage into a relationship yeah. or whatever. Baggage, absolutely. So absolutely. if I'm understanding this right, our souls bring baggage essentially from life to life to life. Yes. Uh, okay. That. Yeah. I mean, that honestly yep. kind of makes sense because when you're saying that, I kind of something popped in my head, and it kind of goes along with karma. You know, all religions have a heaven and a hell. Now, yes. could Pay your dues. I've always kind of thought maybe hell. If you look into terms of reincarnation, and you look in terms of karma, yeah. you were a mean murderer or whatever in a past life. Yep. Karma's going to come back and get you in your next life. Is that right. actually the concept of hell? You're paying your dues in the next life for what you did in the previous life. It could be. It and, could be. And, you know, and then when you're, when you're done paying all your debts and, and learning all you have to do, you go to heaven. Right. You and, go to perfection. You go to the, into the universe, into right. the ether, right. ethereal hmm. realm. Yeah. It's all, it's, you know, even even the those religions and cultures that um, talk about and prefer in their their mythology and folklore a one life at a time, you only get one shot type of thing. Right. They still have you get they still have rewards and punishments, right? Which is the same as karma, right? Like it's just so, like, like what we talked about. It's all versions of the same thing, just different wording, essentially. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I. It's my true belief. Right. So. All right. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. What else do you have questions? Anything else? No, actually, you've kind it's of. It's a fascinating subject. There's you, tons to talk about. You've answered. I, I just. <laughs> oh, you know that really kind of the more I thought about it because I was, I wasn't thinking it. I know we talked about it in terms of yeah. our past lives and kind of a personal record, but then what seeing the other stuff, I was like, it's more of a universal knowledge where everything in the universe is in one place and it, it just to me that's where it didn't make sense was looking at it in terms of that if all yeah. this knowledge is there what's and this knowledge can be accessed and if people are accessing it 
accidentally, which is made more sense to me because if you could physically access it at will, I mean, that is a lot of power right. in that terms. And yeah. we all know how people deal with human race does not have oh, a great yeah. success rate when given extra power or more power than they can handle. It never turns out right for us. You know, and that's kind of what that's kind of what kind of threw me for a loop for the whole thing because if it is an infinite th- or it is a thing out there that we can access, it makes sense because you know we're always growing, we're always learning more. This information, this knowledge has to come from somewhere, but it has yeah. there has to be rules and guidelines to where just not any Joe Smo can go access it to yeah. you know and you know get yeah. that knowledge in. Because there's always two sides to every coin. Everything can either be used for good or bad. And yep, I, there had to true. been, in my mind, there had to been rule. If it is a thing, then there has to be rules to only allow certain yeah. people. That's what kind of, right. like the future thing, I always, okay, I get it. But there has to be a lot of rules and guidelines and hoops to jump through to get to that. I understand the past, sure. the past stuff makes more sense to me because it's in the past. We can't change the past. We're learning from the past, but that future stuff correct, and the future knowledge, there's just so much areas in which it could go it's wrong. Hard, it's, hard, it's much harder to accept right. that, that, that we can access future information. But it makes yeah, sense to me that there, it makes sense to me that there has to be something in the energy in the universe, and almost like that's kind of how when I was younger, I with the thought of God all-knowing. They know yeah. everything, or he or she or it knows everything. And it it gives us the information as needed. Yeah. So that's kind of how I thought of it. Yeah. And and I think one other thing, and I I don't think I mentioned, but (laughs) one of Madame Blavatsky's um, tenets was that it was only at this point in the history of the human experience and and the, the evolution of the human as an entity, it was only at that point in time that we had evolved enough, this was in 18, 1870s, that we had evolved enough to be able to actually access the Akasha. Mm-hmm. Prior to that time, and this is her thought, the human experience, the human brain was not capable, had not yet evolved to the point where they could accept and access Right. The records in themselves. Yeah, because I, I firmly believe we do not use, you know, it's a it's fact that we don't use most of our brain power. You know, we're just using a small right. of, portion of it. And maybe there is something mm-hmm. in there to where when we grow enough, we've reached a certain level in our progression of knowledge through yeah. lives. Yep. Maybe that will ev- you know, whatever switch needs to be turned on in there to where we can actually maybe have a little bit more or are worthy of a little yeah. bit more free access yeah. to this. Right. I, don't, I don't think we've gotten there yet. I oh, think we no. still have a long way to go. I think there's so much more right. that can be available to us, but we're right. not ready for it yet. Yeah, and we're just getting, we haven't little, gotten there yet. We're just getting a little eye droplet portions now of what we can handle. Yeah, we're just getting started. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah well. Yep. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's mind blowing and fascinating and interesting, all rolled up into one. I yeah, mean, it, and as and as you think about the different concepts and put them together, it's also very logical and it, rational. It it start it fills in some blanks and start it starts answering some questions. Definitely, yeah, in, in my mind anyway. Yeah, good. But well, I'm but, glad I could help with that. Yeah, I think I think I got a much better understanding. I hope everybody else got a little bit better understanding. Um, what? All do you? I know you were writing another book. Um, how how's that? I out? am. I'm. Um, I actually this, this the new book is um, a collection of five different stories that um, uh, ghosts have given me, similar to the story of Norman, where they told me most of them have told me um, their the traumatic ending to their life, right. what happened to them. <laughs> uh, one of them actually told me some traumatic portions of her life as she was a younger child and and that's why she's come back to the spirit. But all of them have wanted me to tell their story. So 
there are five different stories, and I have completed the first draft of four of them. Mm-hmm. Working on the last one now. Um, and I've also, as I've gone along, done the research to prove where I could that specific events and incidents that they described to me that I could actually find them historically supported by documents and evidence. So I've been doing that along the way as well. I'm hoping that um, it'll be out. I want to get it out before the end of the year, hopefully later fall. Yes, but it is a lot of work, so I know. I've, yeah, I've been research thinking, more than anything else. All right, I've been <laughs> I've been thinking about doing it for so long, but with doing my real job, the podcast, I I just don't have the time. It'd be I I I'd, hear you. I'd be five years. You know what the best thing to do? Get a get a little notebook and start a journal, so that you have all those thoughts and and ideas, you can just jot them down for future reference. Well, that's kind of I started ma- making like uh, voice memos of because I'm yep. much you know I'm kind of. I have a set schedule with doing the podcast because I've actually, I've been talking about and thinking about moving to two podcasts a week, but it's just a matter of time. Wow. It's just a matter of time of yep. finding the time to do the record. You know, what a lot of people don't realize it's the editing that, you know, is yeah. the time consumption that's part. That's always. But, you know, so I've, yeah. been, I've been trying to rack my brain on how I could do two episodes a week or maybe one episode and then like just a, highlight one but i just said you know what i can't i don't have the time to do it i'm just going to try to yeah. do one episode a week just maybe push it out a little bit longer you know instead of just uh-huh. m- keeping it a half hour let it just let it go for as long as it can be because i just don't have the time and then i said well sure. you know, i'm thinking about writing a paranormal book but i just don't i'm like well, where the hell am i going to find the time to actually <laughs> sit down and write and do all this stuff with with a life, it's just entirely too hard. I mean, I just I I have to agree. Having having been uh you know had a career all my life and and working from the time I was fourteen and mm-hmm. raising kids and having a family and all that stuff. Um, retirement was when I started writing, right. but I knew what I was going to write. I had been planning it for years. Right. So yeah, so maybe one yeah. day I'll get around to. I haven't even had time to go on any investigations in a month, so that's that's how bad it is. Oh, I mean, it's kind of yeah. it's, it's getting real rough around here. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you so much for coming on this episode and kind of enlightening us on the Akashic Records. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, you're quite welcome, and thank you. I enjoyed doing it. And when definitely when you get that book is ready to come out, let me know, and we'll. We'll talk about what's going on in that book and where everybody All can right. find it. My ghost. My ghost story. There we go. All <laughs> right. Thank you once again, and we will All right. talk to you as soon as you get that book done. And don't, if you, you know, find something out about me in the Acoustic Records, don't let me know, please. <laughs> I won't tell you. And I won't go peeking either. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, you know, yeah, <laughs> sure. So. All right. Thank you so much. All right, that's going to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this podcast. If you want to chime in on the topic of the Akashic Records and give me your opinion, be sure to do that on the comment section of ghostofthenightpodcast.com of this particular episode, or you can hit me up on Twitter at night underscore ghost. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast, however you take it in, whether it be iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Tune in or even iHeartRadio, be sure to leave us a review, subscribe to it. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you know somebody that would, who is fascinated with the paranormal, be sure to spread the word and tell them about it and get them to give us a try and give us a listen. If you want to add to the story, be sure to email me at ghostinthenightpodcast at gmail.com and let me know what you think maybe I should cover. I know some people have sent me some messages and want me to do some kind of urban legend episodes and that will be coming up here in in the future. So let me know what you think. I appreciate every one of you that take the time to listen to this podcast. Our download numbers are growing and I really appreciate it. Be sure to check out the website for our paranormal and podcast merchandise. We have a vast selection of t-shirts. Be sure to pick one of those up. I would greatly appreciate it. It'll go a long way in helping produce this podcast and keep the content flowing i thank you and we will see you next week take care everybody